Hello there, my name is Ismas, and today we're going to be looking at how to create a car crashing through walls. So this is what we're going to be doing here, and you can see we have yeah bricks, a wall of bricks, and then we have the car just crashing into them, and uh, you can see how the wall uh, falls down. You can see part of the wall is stays in, intact until it just goes. So we're not just piling bricks, uh, then just using the simulation, the physics simulation to do this. So we are using constraints uh, to get the walls to kind of stick together for a while until a, a large enough force breaks it apart. And you can see it starts off while it's still intact. And uh, only after uh, this crashes into it uh, that the the wall starts falling apart so yeah let's uh, look at uh, how to set this up so i'll just delete everything in our scene and we save this as a different file so that i keep the other one as a backup file for anyone who wants it <coughs> to examine how everything is set up if you're a patreon you can just request the file and i'll be sending it to you so the first thing we want to do is first import the car that car i got it from a free 3dmodels.com i'll be leaving a link in the description for where you can find it uh, so let's just import that it's an obj uh, file so i'll just go in and uh, pick that up you can see this is what we have uh, the textures are kind of missing so i will have to first find them first so let me switch to object mode here and uh, first get the loader as uh, the car itself so i'll just import them and uh, now we got uh, the car ready i uh, want to reset the rotation using alt r uh, let me turn on my keys here Okay, then scale the car a bit because right now it's too large. If you if you check the scale, it's about 77 meters. That's too large. So let me scale it down until it's about two meters wide. And uh, so let's again measure this. Yeah, that's good enough. I'll, after I scale this down, I just apply scale, and I should have something like this. Now we can add a ground, shift A, plane, scale it up, scale it on the X axis. Okay, now that we have everything set up, we can start animating the car. Uh, the first thing, we're, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is animate the car using keyframes for the first uh, maybe 20 frames and then have the rigid body system take over after the 20, 20th frame. So let's do that. Uh, let's set a keyframe uh, for here and then at around key, uh, at around frame 25, we can animate this uh, forward. Now, if we play back, you can see everything is moving forward. Uh, the car is moving forward. And now let's have the rigid body system take over at around frame. Let's just start at, at around frame 20. Uh, the animation we have added will just act as an initial velocity for our car. So let's uh, then turn on rigid body uh, so that you can start from there. So uh, make sure you turn on keyframe. Make sure you turn on the animated option. I make a keyframe for that and then move forward one frame using the arrow keys and uh, remove uh, that animated key. So this will just make sure that uh, the keyframe animation uh, works up to around frame 20 when this animated key feature is on or animated property is on. And then at around frame frame 11, uh, the animation, the rigid body system will take over and uh, you will have uh, the car being animated by the rigid body system. So let's make sure that see, this ground is also a rigid body of type passive uh, so that the car doesn't just go through and see what we are having. You can also increase uh, the friction so that it, do it doesn't slide off too much. And maybe let's also uh, make this ground uneven by using the rigid, uh, by using our uh, deformer as let's uh, subdivide this a few times i want to evenly subdivide this so something like that apply the scale go to the modifiers and add a displacement modifier i will give it some noise uh, for the deformation uh, let me shade it smooth uh, for now uh, this is the influence is a bit too high so i'll just reduce it something like that okay, so if you want uh, this uneven ground uh, to affect to affect how the car is animated, uh, you need to go in. You need to first apply the rigid body system, or go under the modifiers. You need to apply this displacement modifier, or go under uh, the rigid body system, and uh, make sure you have uh, the collision shape set to mesh, and uh, also have deforming turned on so that it, so that this uh, displacement modifier also affects uh, that system. So you can see how the car is being animated. This is what we want. Now let's add uh, the brick walls. So for the brick walls, we're just going to use the array system and also uh, let's, so let's 
model the first few bricks so just add a plane and uh, just do exactly what i'm doing here go to edit mode add a loop like that and add a loop like that then remove this loop so that we have something like that and now if you add an array you can see how we are starting to repeat uh, that pattern then apply uh, the array uh, so we also want to remove this so basically what we're trying to do uh, i think i have some doubles here so i need to make sure that i remove those first by merging uh, by right clicking go under merge that says merge by distance so now i can remove this edge uh, but basically what we want to do is have this repeating pattern now if we add an array you can see how this is repeating and uh, if we copy this array again and uh, this, repeat this on the z axis i mean this the y axis yeah you can see how we have uh, this grid uh, we are still having a few issues here you can see how this wall is being broken up uh, we can go under i think it's this array here i make sure we merge uh, those vertices uh, but uh, we need to add some gaps between each brick so i'll just insert this by hitting i twice or just use ctrl b to bevel uh, those edges those middle edges like so so that's going to be our gap and then we can delete that gap like that now you can see we have enough spaces except for the top array for this top uh, version so we can go under through that array uh, this array here and uh, increase that distance just a bit like that you can see we have other uh, walls repeating except we have this larger wall in the middle so for that we're just going to select this edge and push it inside a bit so that we have uh, the bricks repeating now i can scale this down to the size we want uh, rotate it 90 degrees to face the car just place it in the middle just around there maybe scale it even down make sure you apply the scale and then let's just increase the count just a bit and also on the x-axis like that and so that's what we're going maybe let me scale this just up a bit okay so this is what we are going to have and then now for the thickness we're just going to add an R R solidify modifier now if i increase uh, the th thickness i can see what we are having playback nothing happens because we haven't set up the rigid body system for this but uh, before we want to do that we want to make sure that each brick is an individual brick so for that let's apply the array like that and now uh, we have this uh, let's also make sure that uh, there is no gap between okay yeah, so we are having an issue here so let me first undo this you can see that uh, the array merged some of the vertices there so we don't want that so let's go back to the array that has the merge option just need to do okay here you can see we have a merge distance of about 1.0.10 and uh, that is not enough uh it's kind of merging some of the vertices are uh, from other bricks so we want to reduce that to about 0, 0.00 to have something like that now if we apply this now and i think we are good to go we don't have any each brick we have is a single brick hopefully okay we still have some merging issues no we don't so now that we are done with that how you can just hit p go to edit mode select everything and then hit p and then separate by loose parts if you have uh if you go under this uh, viewport shading and turn on random colors i should see that uh, every brick is shaded at different is given a different shade <coughs> and that's how that's helping us to see that uh, every brick we have each and uh, so it, and uh, okay so now that we are done with that you can see that uh, all the bricks have been separated as a single brick but the problem is that uh, they have their their pivot point are still at the original pivot point so what i'm going to do is uh, uh, select every brick and then reset their origin uh, to geometry you can see now each brick has its center of origin uh, in the center of this geometry uh, another thing i will do here is uh, move these, bri these bricks into 
a new collection uh, called bricks so that they're easy for me to select and uh, now if I play back this you can see they are good to go so I can select the bricks collection and select the bricks and now I, I just need to give the uh, their own rigid body system so I'll go an object rigid body add passive add active and now they're all added to the rigid body system let me just extend this a bit and see they're all falling at the same time uh, because the rigid body is uh, was working and now but uh, I don't I want them to be I don't want them to just fall at once I, I want them to only fall when they collide when the car collides out through them so what I'm going to do is that uh, if I select if you select all the bricks shift G select the collection you can go to the rigid body systems and uh, under dynamics you can turn on deactivate and then start the activation uh, this will make sure that uh, the bricks will only activate or start falling after a rigid body object another rigid body co object collides with them but uh, right now we have only set this deactivation for only the active uh, the active brick so we need to make sure that all the selected bricks have the same uh, settings so just right click on this icon on this side uh, activation copy it selected to copy the settings to all these selected objects and uh, copy these two settings to the selected objects and now you can see they only start falling after the car collides with them but uh, the velocity of the car is not enough uh, to push through the, the bricks so I'm just going to speed it up by moving these keyframes closer and uh, maybe also increase uh, the mass of uh, the car and see now we get that uh, the issue we're having here is that uh, all the bricks are falling at the same time immediately after uh, the car uh, crashes into them instead of just the impact coming from the center where the car has been has collided and then kind of pushing all these bricks to fall uh, as well so for that what we're going to do we're going to use connections or rigid body constraints and uh, the way we set that up is just uh, just select all the bricks shift G collection bricks rigid body go to object and then under rigid body you can select the connect you can connect them using this connect option and connect them using a rigid body constraint so it will take a few seconds to calculate and maybe your computer will freeze for a bit uh, but after it's done i should get this menu uh, we want to connect everything uh, by connect the connect we hope you want to set the connection pattern you want to connect you want to set the connection pattern to connect uh to chain by distance uh, so that every brick is connected to the nearest brick instead of the active object okay now that we're done with that we can see how this looks so let's play back let me also just move these our connections to their own group so I'll just have a connector group okay so if I want to turn them off I can just go and turn that off now if you play back and see we have uh, the walls being connected uh, each brick is connected uh, to or cemented to another brick uh, to, to the closest to the closest uh, brick uh, but uh, we're seeing some kind of rope effect are going on where the forces uh, have been broken up but uh, not for every brick so what I'm going to do is uh, if you if you go to the connectors select all the connectors uh, there and you go to the physics properties you can see that uh, we have a constraint settings for each of the connectors and uh, we have in the settings we have a breakable force if you have we have a breakable setting if we set this on it will make sure that uh, if uh, the force the, if the force of impact is above uh, this threshold uh, each of the end of the connections are uh, the connections will be broken and uh, since the the most force of since the most force of impact is at the center here I uh, will see that uh, most of the bricks will start uh, most of the bricks will start uh, falling or being disconnected are uh, from the center where the highest impact is and then uh, that force can spread up so let's make sure that uh, this setting is connect is set for every other uh, connection connector we have here so let's go and copy to select it let's see and see but I think uh, the threshold is not enough so let me just uh, check back and see if this setting was applied to everything okay 
And another thing we can do is uh, increase uh, the mass of uh, the brick. So let's just set it to something like three. Okay. And uh, res let's reduce the breakable threshold force at something like three. Copy to selected. And now let's see what happens. You can see this is exactly what we want. You can see that uh, the, fo the force of impact uh, starts from the center here and it spreads out across. Uh, you can see some parts of the wall stay connected as that is falling. But another thing we can do here is uh, these bottom row of bricks can be connected to the ground so that uh, they are kind of cemented uh, to the ground as well as uh, that's what you would expect in real life. So let's first hide this ground, select all uh, the bricks at the bottom and hide the and then go on the object you get body and then connect them to that and you can see what we want to make sure that uh, they are breakable but let's see how this affects everything you can see they are staying at the on the ground uh, but i also want them to be breakable so i'll just copy to select it i'll give them a breakable force maybe reduce uh, that breakable force so shift g Make sure it's breakable and uh, make sure it's uh, just three. So, and I think I think uh, that uh, our connections are uh, this. Maybe we can reduce uh, the force here again. So let's see. can see what we have Yes, and that's how you break a wall using Blender 2.8.